Hmm, get a tragic here, and welcome to my latest mod for Tabletop Simulator. This is Arkham Horror, second edition, as they say nowadays, the 2005 edition. So this is the mod so far, and like a lot of my mods, because there's so much work, I just like to leave, release it in chunks. And this is Arkham Horror corset only at this stage. Now. Some of you may know that Arkham Horror is a bit of a behemoth of a game. It has heaps of modules and expansions and there's a lot of custom rules and all this kind of stuff and handmade print and play stuff and all this kind of stuff. The goal of this mod is to support all of that. And the way it does this is by using this build pool function here. So the way this works is Basically, you place the components that you want to use in your game onto this table and then hit build pool and it creates the pool. And even though I've just done the corset, I've put in some standard kind of things that a lot of people would use. So, for example, if we want to play Arkham Horror, the base game, we'd use the Arkham Horror board. We would use the great old ones from Arkham Horror. We would use the gates from Arkham Horror. But you know what? I don't want to use those gates. I'm going to use the Arkham Horror gates from Lurker in the Threshold. In fact, you know what? I'm going to use both sets of gates. So I just dump them down. And I need the Investigators. And I need all the original AH monsters and the AH Mast monsters. And you know what else I'll do? I'll also get the mythos uh, the injury and madness cards from the mr metonic horror expansion and i'm pretty much ready to go actually you know what i'll also get the dunwich horror location cards and that's basically my setup okay and the reason it's done in this sort of roundabout way is that the idea is i'll be able to simply add more bags to this area like say more investigators, more goos, more whatever. And then people want to use them, they can just put them on this board before they start. No need for me to add any extra coding, no need for anything. You can add your own stuff really easily. And that's the goal of this mod is to be very modular. So once you have the setup you like, you can just drag out a bag from here. I'll just rename it. You just rename it to say demo bag and then uh, just hit pack up. And this becomes a bag that you can save into your, you know, you right click it and you go save object and you just give it a name and then you can just drag it out of here. So if I went objects, save objects, I made a directory called Arkham setups. Blam. And I can just go right click, save, save it to Arkham set it, setups, and bam. And then next time I load the mod, I can just go save objects, drag out the demo bag, and just hit place. And it just puts it all on the table ready to go. And that's how you can build your own setups with anything you want. If you want to have, oh, I don't like that one card, I can just remove it from the deck. If you want to have all sorts of stuff in, do whatever you want. That's the idea of this. And hopefully it'll all work out once I have a lot more content in the mod. Anyway, once you've placed it, you just hit the build pool. And what that'll do is create the things on the table. I've put quite a lot of uh, outputting just for fun. So you can see it's added the decks, it's added all the monsters, it's shuffled them and all this kind of stuff. Now, the other thing about this mod to make it modular is because there's so many boards, you know, like there's there's three boards, there's three expansion boards just from Dunwich, Innsmouth and uh, Kingsport. There's also the main board. There's also about five or six fan expansions that are like huge, as good as, you know, things like Vermont Horror and stuff, which are literally as good as a, a paid expansion. There's a whole bunch of these boards. So I wanted the players, you can actually move this around and set this up, set the table up any way you like. 
So you drag out your player boards, you know what I mean? And you can set these up any place you want, you know what I mean? And the, the app will understand what you're doing. You just can't rotate it because I couldn't figure out how to do rotational matrices. It was beyond my mathematics. Right, so once you have it set up the way you want, so say if I was just gonna play Arkham Horror, I might wanna play a six player game. Uh, you have these little player board journals at the top. You can just drag these out. And I might make a tool at some point to help it to make these easier to align, but you basically set it up like that, right? And then once you do that, you hit the setup. But before you hit setup, you come down here and you've got to drag out a great old one onto the table. So all the great old ones that you selected with your pool will be now in the great old one bag. So you can shuffle that and just drag one out. Or you can just, uh, you know, go into it and drag out the one you want. So say I want to play with Narth, Thelatop or whatever. So you just chuck them on the table. It doesn't matter where you put them. Play them on the table. The same for, great, for the uh, Guardians. Now I didn't have any Guardians in my... Uh, initial setup so there's nothing in these bags okay but say I go you know what I actually do want to play with Guardian so I'm gonna just pull out my Guardian and my institution and my heralds I'm just gonna go build pool again and that'll just send that down so now if I want a Guardian I'll pull out a Guardian and I'll pull out a Herald and again the same thing just randomly pull one out or pull out uh, you know, just randomly pull one out or pull out the exact one you want. Same with the investigators. So you can just, this bag is shuffled. So you can just drag out an investigator and place it on the board. Or you can just leave the boards blank and it will randomly choose. Okay. From whatever's remaining in that bag. So say I want to play with those three, but I want the others to be random. That's the way I'd do it. And you'll note that there's two player boards. There's one that's sort of for this side of the table and there's one that's sort of for this side of the table. And you can tell because the card search and the, you know, the, the sort of flatter area is facing the center. And then once you've got it all set up, you just hit run setup and booyah, everything gets set up. Okay. And you can see that it's created, uh, it sort of moves this into the side and these things go up here. It also clears up the back and all the scripting at the back. That makes the save game and the, the whole game lighter if you want to save and continue. And we're basically ready to go. So I'm just going to show you that quickly again. Uh, I come back over here. I've just loaded the game as if I've loaded it from the mark, uh, the workshop. I just go into my save objects where I saved the setup I wanted. Boom. And I'll just dump that onto the area. And then I will build the pool. I drag out a random uh, goo. And I... I don't, that's all I want. And I bring out a bunch of these player boards. Say I want to play with four players this time. I'll just do that. Okay. And then once I've got a goo out and I'm ready to go, I just hit run setup and out it all starts. Okay. And that's pretty much it. You'll notice that when you only got one goo, he's in the center though. And that's most of how the mod works. The rest of the mod is fairly self-explanatory. If you want to draw a Mythos card, you just hit the Mythos button, right? And out it comes and it kind of goes here, okay? So that's the first Mythos card of the, of the game. We've got a graveyard, gate appears at the graveyard. So you've got your gate pile, out comes here. Remember I had uh, the both of the sets of of gates here 
this is see the great race and where to go to the graveyard so i just go down to the graveyard get rid of this clue boom and for the clues right you can actually drag the clues from the card just over that little circle so if that unvisited island needs a clue i just drag the clue out of there drop it down and that's pretty much that. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, and if you draw other Mythos cards, it'll replace the existing one and it'll draw environments to this side. Headlines will go in the center. And if I can find one, <laughs> there is one in here somewhere. Gee, this would have been a good game no rumors ah look and the story continues comes out if that comes out you just uh, read it and then hit the reset methos deck and you can see it over here we'll do all the reshuffling and everything for you somewhere there will be a rumor ah and rumors go onto this side okay and that's the way that works you've got your activity tokens so boom you can drop an activity token on these cards and then you know drop them wherever you need them so this rumor is uh active in french hill streets so you put that here and this environment is just everywhere so that wouldn't actually need a token but you get my point you've also got closed markers here and over here you have doom tokens you can drag out do as the doom track grows you've also got elder signs down here for when you completely close off a location like that in addition uh if you hold down alt and mouse over the board you can actually have the locations will pop up so you can read them and that's important because some of them have text like this one you know like say you want to read the police station but even ones that don't like say the newspaper the two little symbols, the dollar sign and the clue, that tells you the kind of results you get from winning successes, okay? So if you do a successful test at the newspaper, you're gonna get money or clues. And that's really important for when you're trying to actually win. Okay, so let's go to the next big thing about this mod is the, you know, the, the player board. So what the way it starts with, it gives you your fixed possessions, which are the ones at the top. So your money gave him a spell and the spell was shivering. You've got your sanity and your stamina values here and you can just right click to go down and left click to go up. I haven't put any ceilings on these. I think it maxes out at nine because your chances of going above nine are non-existent basically. But uh, there is a max and minimum stamina which is based on your hero's board. So you just have to do that yourself. I haven't bothered to code that uh, you set up your initial stats and you're ready to go so the next thing I need to do is get my common item one common one common item one unique item two spells and one skill and that's these buttons down here control almost all the decks so if I want a common item I just click the common item button and out it comes if I want a skill a unique item I just click it and if you want multiple cards of the same thing just click it multiple times so if I want you know spells I'm just going to click it twice quickly and when it sees that I've stopped clicking it'll draw the spells and now I've got all my spells okay I've got two bind monsters that's annoying he's got his ability that allows me to draw extra spells so I could actually draw another two spells because I draw two spells and I don't want four of the two of the same so I'll just chuck these out there's a little bin in the bottom corner of this of the books if you dump them in there they'll send everything back to the discard pile and you got the same thing so you've got common unique spells uh, allies and skills I didn't draw a skill he needs a skill as well will that's a good one for him okay now 
The other thing you can do is if you right click on this, it'll actually draw from the bottom of the pile. So this one is the lantern. So if I right click on here, it'll draw from the bottom. That's important for people like Ashcan, Pete or whatever. Now, you might note that I'm using discard piles. That's because that's the way I prefer to play. And while I make the mod for everyone to share, it's really made for me. So I use discard piles. So the mod will use discard piles. If that's not good enough for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the draw from bottom will still, should still uh, act actually work the same way. See? beautiful. It'll actually draw it from the discard pile if you do the draw from bottom because technically it should be like that, right? Because you're supposed to put everything underneath the decks. So if you draw from the bottom using these buttons, it'll actually draw from these piles if they exist. So it will be drawing from the correct place. Now, any special item, you use this little button here for special items. And this works the same way as fetch cards. So say I wanted to fetch uh, the sword of whatever it's called from the, from the unique item deck. I just click on search, type sword, press enter, and then click on unique, and out it'll come. Okay. And if I want any kind of special card I do, like say I want a uh, lodge membership, I just go lodge, click, and out it comes. And these these are search terms, not exact terms. So you can use half words and stuff. So like say I need a blessing, I'll just type bless. And I can go bam, I've got a blessing. If I want a curse, just go curse. I've got a curse. If I want a injury, and so on and so forth. So that is how the these all work. Okay, and of course, remember, you can just discard into the bin to send everything back to the correct piles. Also, you have this button for Uptown. So what this does is, uh, if I can find him, oh, let's find someone who's a bit easier. Here we are, Mandy. Mandy is in Mr. Metodic University, which is this area here. So as I move her around, so say she moves to the unnameable, it actually will uh, change the location. See how it says Merchant District now? So if I move down to Uptown, it's now saying Uptown. So if I move over to uh, Velma's Diner, it's now the East Town streets that you're drawing from. And then it just works the same way. I click it and out will come my uh, you know, card that I'm supposed to be using. Okay. And finally, you have the die roller itself. So this is how I've done the die roller because I don't like rolling dice. Well, I love rolling dice in real life, but in tabletop simulator, I don't, I like to use die rollers. So basically, if you just click these buttons on the ends, you can set these values. It goes up to 30, you'll never roll more than 30. Uh, I have rolled 28 once, literally. <laughs> but anyway, uh, if you right click on these dots, it'll reset to one. And if you right click on the actual roller, it'll change it to blessed or cursed or normal. And then all you need to do is click the roll button and it will roll the dice like so and it will also display your results. So you can see I got four successes and a bunch of fails. And, you know, like I said, if you roll the blessed dice, you know, you'll get much better results and cursed dice, you'll get cursed results. And that's pretty much how the roller itself functions. There is another little quality of life thing that I did add. Uh, If sort of hidden, you can't really see it, but the sort of the top near the paperclip, if you click that, it'll zoom to the map of wherever you are on the table. So wherever this thing is, this token, that's where 
it'll take you. And if you click on the bottom of the token, it'll take you back to your player board. And that's just a real quick way to zip around the map to make it a bit easier for me. Also, if you look at the token, uh, if you press the two button, it'll switch it over to delayed and so forth and so forth. And again, if you come into the other worlds, like so, it changes you know, the button to the other world. And of course, the other world, you've got to keep drawing until you get the correct color. So yellow doesn't work. We're supposed to have a, a red and a green. So I just keep clicking this, I've got a green. So there you go. I would evaluate the other value. And like all these things, you can chuck them into the discard pile. Ooh. It'll, uh, you know, go into the discard pile. We correct the discard piles. And that's about that. I thought I took off all those. Yeah, these are, I'm sp I meant to take off these before I uploaded it. I'll do that so that there's no, none of these things are supposed to be there. Okay, and that is pretty much how the mod functions. Uh, you've got your gate pile here. You'll see that it sort of gets bigger and smaller and you can chuck it into the, the discard pile when you're finished or you know, you're supposed to keep them if you actually are able to keep them. And that's pretty much that. You've got your monster cup here and the monster cup isn't automated. You just drag them out as you need them and place them wherever. Uh, I have added the functionality to sort of automate the outskirts and the sky as a counter, but I haven't bothered to do it yet. But uh, you can just drop them down there for now. And that is pretty much it. Oh yeah, I've also got uh, a little monster cup dispenser that you can use to just drag out monster cups. And that's because some people, they like having thematic, you know, thematic uh, drawers for the monsters, you know, like, so they put, they split the monsters into different piles and put them in different cups. So that's just so people can do that if they want to. Uh, anything else of interest? I think that's pretty much the whole spiel. Uh, the relationship cards and the personal stories are here and ready to use, but they haven't, uh, they're not scripted. So if you wanted the personal story for Drake, you would just go to tasks, do search and go Drake and just drag it out. That's how you get his personal story. And if you wanted a relationship, I just, uh, you could draw it naturally to so just drag, draw one out and put it sort of, you know, between the two pieces, two characters or whatever. Okay, and that is the Arkham Horror mod. Now, there's quite a lot, there's a lot to add to this mod. It's not nearly finished, but it's at the point where I want to do some play testing of the base game just to see how it's all functioning and see what kind of changes I might make before adding tons of more content. But it's pretty much ready to go. And that is that. Uh, yeah, so eventually there'll be a lot more stuff and I'll have this all more organized. And that's it, that's the mod. I hope you guys like it. And I will see you guys next time. And I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Arkham Horror Core on my channel shortly. See you next time.